part of the land along 202 be carved out, and that would be suitable for some development, yeah. and then the rest of the property could be used for... We can't hear you, sir. <laughs> Just hold it close. Okay, so we... Uh, did you hear any of what I was saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that was one proposal where part there'd be maybe 100 acres carved out along 202 for development, and the rest of the property could be uh, used either for open space or large lots. There has been um, uh, a number what is of your plan, plans? sir? What do you I don't have? have to see, I don't have a plan. I we're am, expected to have a plan. Why? Be, well, from the vote no people. They keep coming up. They have no plan. They have no plan. So I'm just curious what your plan is. Well, my plan is what is best for the landowner who perhaps would want to work with the township to come up with a joint plan. I mean, nobody here has the ability to uh, make a decision for someone else. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure how you think that we have, we have all this power. We do not. Well, I'm not concerned with your power, I'm concerned with what your plan is, because your group keeps insisting that we have a plan. So I'm well, curious what your plan is, that's all. Okay. I don't have a group. So anyway, uh, the you have made the statement that all these developers are beating the door down to take this uh, project Believe over. Believe me, they are. Well, I mean, you do realize when Toll Brothers lost, I mean, they lost very, very badly. After six years of spending lots of money and uh, wasting time from their standpoint. So uh, I don't think too many similar developers would be trying to do something very similar again because that would really make no sense, particularly in this economy where most developers are walking away from deals unless they uh, slam dunks. So uh, I, I think there is time for uh, rational head to come together and come up with a good plan, whether that involves some open space, some type of development, whatever it might be. But that's all I can tell you. Well, the vote no, no people also want to claim that there will be no, they, they don't like our plan because there will be no farming. Pat, we're, 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 we're at our three minutes. So let, let's. Could I hear from each of the other supervisors briefly? Yeah. Um, I guess that I, I would answer it differently. Um, I had the opportunity to, along with my wife, to tour the property. Uh, I think uh, I've said it to enough people. Uh, both Bobby and I found it absolutely extraordinary, beyond our expectations. It's different when you see it from the outside, but when you're on the inside of it, it's magnificent. So if I were to be asked what my plan is, I would turn it to natural lands and ask a very simple question, and either Todd or Jack can answer this question. And I think it's kind of embedded and implied with the questions that are being asked about the, uh, uh, the, the grants. I asked you a question when I first uh, heard about this, and you came to a board meeting that was Jack, but I'm happy to either one of you answer it. How confident are you that we are going to get enough or sufficient money in the grants uh, to make this a successful initiative. And I think what I told you at that time is I don't work on a project that I do not believe is going to be successful, and I still believe that, that ultimately we will be successful. So before you leave there, um, again, it's embedded and implied in the questions that have been asked about the two million from uh, DCNR. When you think of the two million versus the 18 million that's expected, it seems minuscule. Whether one supports or doesn't support the yay or the nay, it just seems small. The flip side of heard we've heard is that DSR, it was the largest grant that the DCNR gave this year in the state. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So the question would be is that there's a 16 million dollar gap just from the DCNR grant to whatever these other grants are waiting for. When will we hear about them so that people who are concerned that somehow we will not meet this deadline, um, how concerned are you? Uh, we, we've already made a, a second grant to DCNR for the, for the exact same source of funds. Um, we expect to hear from that grant in January. 
uh, the outstanding county grants, um, they have not announced the words yet, and our expectation is in the next few months. So, if I had a vision, my vision is the following. I tend to be an optimist in these types of processes, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, my vision is, is that I would like to see this uh, a successful referendum, successful acquisition of the properties, and ultimately the township uh, acquire uh, the 200 plus acres. Uh, Mr. Robinson and his family are successful in selling the uh, four lots, which will be under the conservation easement. And uh, people 25 years from now can look back and say, this was a very courageous action on part of our township, and particularly the board's previous board in this board, and that we've had a successful uh, initiative, and we have open space. So I think the question was, what is uh, my plan? Uh, my plan is to see that the township carries through uh, its obligation to perform under the agreement of sale and does so in good faith. Uh, so that being said, uh, we have a willing seller. Uh, the township is the buyer. Parties to contracts in Pennsylvania are obligated to act in good faith and I will make sure that the township does that under my watch. That does not mean uh, if certain contingencies fall through uh, that the agreement um, won't be terminated. It, it may well be. I mean, it, it may well be. Uh, but that's really up for the citizens of West Town to, 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 to decide on November 8th. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, maybe I misunderstood the question because that kind of predisposed that the deal would not go through so we would have to have an ordinate plan. Uh, as Scott said, we, the board unanimously has approved the agreement of sale and we are obligated to go through each step and if the referendum carries and the money comes in, we're all in and that's, the, uh, that's how we're going to go. But a lot of things can happen. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Back to you, Pat. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, your, your name and address, please. Hi, guys. Um, Stephanie O'Brien, um, Hinchley Run, West Town Township. I'm actually the vice chair for the Republican Party for the whole area of West Town Township, Thornbury. So I want to ask a question personally, and then I want to ask a question from um, a constituent. Um, so first of all, for the past two years, I've been attending the Chester County Commissioner's meetings. And I sit in those meetings and I hear all of the grants that are being approved for parks and recreations, etc. And I want to understand the process of did, and again, I don't know who it would be, who went to the board to ask a request that they could absorb some of the costs because this is in Chester County and it would alleviate the West Town Township people. Has that been done or can you explain if it wasn't done and why? I, I, I mean, I, I think the, the appropriate people to, to answer that is Natural Lands um, about interfacing with the commissioners. Yeah, we have applied for the, for the county grants like we do multiple times for every project every year and, and there's been some discussion with commissioners and it's in their hands to announce awards. Okay, so is it basically a request and then they get back to you and say, no, we're not going to consider this? Is there discussion to help the, I, mean, I would think people on our supervisory board would be in that discussion to market it to, to, to get them on board to help us I, that's I just want to understand it from a citizen's perspective uh, we make a grant application it's ranked and reviewed with all the other grant applications in the county either makes an award or not so you're saying that they did not rank it or what what's the ranking system um, they, they judge every application based on its merits um, and we're expecting the county to announce awards in the, in the near future. Okay, so it's still in progress, is that right? Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So that could be, to the citizens here of Westtown, that could be something that is awarded as a grant 
from the county, and that would oh, help. We, we fully expect a grant from the county. Okay, I, you've never said that, and again, no, I'm just trying to understand okay. from a so we, we expect additional grants from the state, land and water conservation funds, and the county. Okay. Right? okay. And, those, and those applications have, have, have been submitted and they're, they're under review and, and moving forward. So when would you know? And then that you know, we're talking about a government entity. You know, the, the county has announced awards within a couple of months, and it's taken them over a year before. The, the state is similar. Um, when when the politicians decide to announce awards, they announce awards. Thank you, Nana. Three minutes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Margaret Key, eleven fourteen, Tower I'd like to start by saying Cribbly Farms is a gorgeous piece of property. However, grocery store prices are going up, the shelves are not full, gas prices are up and down, we're in inflation period of time. I'm very concerned about the raising taxes for a non-essential. As beautiful as it is, it would be wonderful to have this part. I think the time is really bad for raising taxes. Is there a guarantee that these taxes would never go up? The only way under the Open Space Preservation Act that the taxes can go up would be via another referendum of the residents. Okay, so a couple of possible solutions. Instead of raising taxes, could we have yearly uh, fundraisers where other townships, not only West Town, would be involved because they would be using the park too? Or, as Stephanie mentioned, have Chester County make it into a park. I'm very concerned about our taxes being raised now. I'm not sure who's best to answer any of those questions. Well, I'll just speak to the county making it into a park. I mean, that, that suggestion, Margaret, has been circulated and bandied about for <coughs> decades. Um, and, and as best I can see, the county has shown very, very little interest in taking ownership of Crayville and turning it into a, a county park or county facility. They've shown like no interest. Um, likewise with the state. And it, it just comes down to, to the price per acre. I mean, the state and county can drive 20 miles to the west and buy 200 acres for a tenth of the price. So I, I don't I don't think a, a, the state or county are, are going to step in, and, and, and that's never been really a, a realistic option. Well, it's it's concerning that it's putting a burden on people, especially if it's raised and the sale does not go through, and then we're paying taxes on something. Margaret, I'm going to answer the question in a different way. Um, and it's probably the, one of the few things that the no vote and the yes vote would agree with you. I don't think either group would have picked this particular time if it had had that choice. But we weren't given that choice. It is what it is. And that's why it's really up to, to the residents. If they wish to do one thing with Crivelli, then that's one decision. If they don't wish to do it with Crivelli, about Crivelli, that's the other decision. But specifically on the issue that you raised, which is a fair point, on the timing, it's, it's not the greatest timing in the world. Having said that, let's assume for a minute that Crivelli is developed, developed as in <coughs> housing, whatever you want to call it. Um, the public's taxes are going to go up regardless. It's just the nature of the animals. So, uh, sort of it's, in French we say, comme ci, comme ça. You have a choice of one or the other and the timing of it. That's kind of the way I've looked at it. But as for the timing, obviously none of us would say it's the greatest time in the world. Ma'am, your three minutes are up. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Your name and address, please. Yes, my name is Sandy Mandy, 600 South Chester Road, West Chester. Um, I had understood this was to save Crib Billy, 
but if we have to vote on this before there is any $16 million more funding uh, established, what we're actually voting on is do we want open space or do we want housing? Because the, the um, November election is going to commit us to open space regardless of what open space that is. So if Crew Gully does not go, what is the township's plan on how that money will be spent and are we saddled with this decision on our part before you're giving us enough information to make a successful decision? So what I can say to your first part of your question is the money must be spent on open space acquisition or maintenance. So whether that's existing open space that the township has, if the sale does not go through, or additional open space that it wants to acquire. I'm not sure that I can speak to, frankly, the second part of your question. I'm not sure anyone can. Is there other open space that the um, township would be interested in buying? Well, whether the township is interested in buying, the, the, the question is, is there other open space in the township? And yes, there's other open space. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Andrew. I, I can't speak for the Board of Supervisors about what they would want to do with it, but in answer to the question of, is there op additional open space in the township? Yes, there is additional open space in the township. So could the money be used for that purpose, hypothetically? We're starting to get in the realm of very hypothetical. Yes, there's other uses potentially for the money. Was there any consideration, if pre was not going to be available, that this funding would be stopped rather than 30 years from now? Well, yes, as I said, the, 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 the open space tax can only be rescinded by a, formally rescinded by another referendum. However, by ordinance, if there is no compelling need target for the money, the, the board can lower it to a very, very low rate. Um, so, you know, the, obviously that's, I don't, I think I can speak freely for the board when I say they have no interest in levying a tax for, 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 for a, a non-existent purpose. So we would, we would not overtax the residents if, in that very hypothetical situation. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, your name and address, please. Eva Foster, 734 West Foreign Road, Westtown, PA. Um, as I mentioned in a previous meeting, I contacted the governor's office, the Department of Agriculture, and the DCNR, asking for agriculture to stay. What I was told by all three was no exceptions. However, DCNR has given an extension to its grant requirement that all agriculture be terminated properly without closing of the deal. Whether the extension is for three years or more, uh, and the end result will be the same. The farm will cease to exist. Was this extension obtained just to make the deal more appealing to voters? No, it, it is not. The, the three-year three -year window is, is routinely when natural lands is bought properties using that fund. We do not simply walk away from a bare field takes a couple of years to, to plan, to, to, to get the replanning and the grant funds in order to replan. But was agriculture allowed during that three-year period? During that three-year period, yes. Beyond that, no. Uh, do you have another question? Yes. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, what are the real costs just to initiate the conversion? Yeah. 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 What are the real costs just to from a farm to open space. Natural Lands Trust provided estimates of what it would cost to convert the farm to open space. The numbers they provided range from a low of 686,000 to about 1.5 million, but these estimates do not include basic infrastructure items such as installing electric, wells, septic, stormwater, etc. Professionals in this field estimate the real cost between two and three million. Tell us why your numbers are right and more complete than contractor numbers are wrong. Well, I think Natural Lands can speak to the estimate. I think, as you heard earlier, that they, since there's no definitive plan yet for the property, real costs cannot yet be given to you. All you can be given is an estimate because the board hasn't decided how the land would be used. Stormwater and sanitary sewer and those things of that nature may be, to me, a little 
uh, out there for passing land, but maybe somebody, yeah, go ahead, Todd, maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, I would also just add that a lot of the restoration work that we talked about in that concept um, is the kind of thing that we can work with the township to go after grant support for um, to help cover, help cover those costs. And so it doesn't, it doesn't mean that that number equates to the cost of the township. So you can get a grant for a John Deere tractor that will run about $100,000 just for maintenance? We haven't decided we needed that. You will. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Marshall Werner. I live on Hinchley Run in uh, Weston. <clears throat> I have a couple of questions. Um, first, I guess, is, is a difficult question to ask. And it's, <clears throat> when I went onto the county website, I took a look, or I was looking, to see comparative tax rates. And Westtown seems to have a tax rate of 3.50 mills. When I looked at what Thornberry was, their tax rate was 0 0.995. So a 0.42% increase would double their tax, it would be a 50% increase in their taxes, just by comparison. When I looked at what East uh, Goshen's tax rate it was, or is, it's 1.25 mills. West Town is 3.50. If they had a 0.2 percent, 0.2 uh, mills increase, that would be a 30 some odd percent increase of their tax rate. The fact that we have such a high tax rate kind of distorts the appearance of how significant this particular tax increase is. Um, and I, I just don't understand why our tax rate is so high now and why it's going to increase to be even higher, three times higher or four times higher than the surrounding communities. Could, could you help me understand? Yeah, I can, uh, I can Marshall, that's a good, uh, very valid question. I can, I can attempt an answer to that. Uh, Westtown does not have an industrial tax base. We have a very small commercial base. Um, if you look at those other communities, like Thornberry, particularly along the Route 202 corridor, East Goshen has some very large employers like um, like well, Lovaza and um, CDTI, uh, CDTI, um, and that 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 we unfortunately in West Ham don't have. So that helps buffer the tax base in those two communities. Another variable that we have in West Town, unfortunately, for better or for worse, we have West Town School, which is a lovely piece of property, a lovely school, but unfortunately that's tax exempt. And ditto, we have uh, uh, three elementary schools, a middle school and a public and a, and a high school, which also take up a lot of land, plus a number of churches. So 15% um, of our tax base is, is exempt. So collectively, those two factors contribute to our higher, but higher tax burden. But, you know, on the benefit side, the quality of life is higher because we have less, you know, commuters in the township than, than, than you'd have in those communities with, uh, with more commercial activity. So I just want to uh, restate it in, in my words. So we have the highest tax rate of any community in the surrounding area that's residential. And um, it's because there's so much non-profit or untaxed property in the township and we're looking to acquire another large piece so it can become untaxed property as well. It's a, it, I'm just trying to follow that logic. Sir, so the future... Sir, uh, your three minutes are up. Oh, sorry. I had the better question was coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walton, your name and address, please. Uh, Dave Walter, 937 Thorn Drive. I have two questions. First, I'd like to commend the Board of Supervisors for is, uh, addressing this project through a referendum. Other municipalities would have seized the land from under the main or the supervisors would have made some deal in the back room. But you're going to be congratulated for that. My first question is, it's unclear to me if the $7.5 million bond, the principal is reduced to zero through the tax increases you 
off the bat, or does, does the tax increase only include the, print, the uh, interest on those bonds? No, it, it would be principal and interest. Okay, so so yeah. after 30 years, there's zero bonds left. Correct. Okay. The second question, we, we've often uh, discussed the historic aspect of Cray Billy, and the fact that along South New Street, it's likely that that's where uh, the British Crown forces, the Hessians and whatever, marched to the Battle of Brandywine. And under the, uh, the Toll Brothers provision, uh, one of the representatives told me that they would consider putting in a parking lot and historic signage to recognize that advance by the British Crown forces. So I'm wondering if these easements on these private acres that will be carved out on the west side, if those easements include a provision for having a parking lot and a historic sign, is they'll now be in private units. Well, I don't imagine they'll have a public parking lot on someone's private land, but maybe uh, Todd or someone can speak to signage. So correct on the parking lot, um, but I would also point out that the 206 acre portion does include a portion of the western side of the property along the road that would that would protect some of that battlefield. Um, the four lots under conservation easement um, would not have public access or parking lots. Um, we do work with willing landowners on signage to commemorate the protection of the property. Keeping in mind, conservation easement is going to protect that property to keep it looking the way it looks now. There's not going to be additional subdivisions, not going to be additional homes which could happen if we aren't successful in doing this. And so, um, so signage, potentially yes, uh, public access, parking lots, no. Thank you. Yes, sir, down here, yeah, name address, please. Brent Selleck, uh, I actually live across the street from Prairie Billy, so I'm, uh, I'm definitely a vote yes guy. Uh, but, I, <laughs> but, I, but I did hear some things that people were saying, and I think I'm going back to a question that you guys have kind of already answered. But I'm just wondering if there's another way to do it. Is there a way to put a contingency in the referendum so that if it doesn't go through, or if you don't get the funding by March 31st, that there's a way to not increase taxes? Let me answer your first question. No. So the referendum question was, is specifically directed by state statute. All of the language, except for the percentage of the tax increase, has to read the way it does. So there's no other way that we, or the residents are permitted, because uh, the General Assembly has said, that's how you ask the question. Okay. What was your second part of your question? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, I don't think there really was a second okay. part. Okay. But um, I do have a, a separate question. So let's just say, it does pass, and we get to March 31st, and we only have 8 million raised or 10 million raised. Is there a way to extend the contract, uh, or you know, have you guys already talked about extending the contract? Because you know, theoretically, the landowner could walk away, and you know, there would be a deal between you guys and the landowner, but it, it would more protect everybody. So, I'll speak to that. It's hypothetical, obviously. Yeah. Um, the short answer is, hopefully, contracts are extended all the time in all different sorts of settings. Um, if in that instance we have eight or 10 million in grants commitments uh, and a past referendum, um, I would hope that the landowner would uh, stay in the agreement. Uh, the agreement speaks to September of 2023 as a drop dead day for closing. So I, I would hope that the, the, the owner would, would work with the township and work with natural lands, uh, but they don't necessarily have to. Yeah, but it's not in the contract. Um, and the last thing, the guy that was before me brought up great points, and I do think like we need more commercial space, so it just needs to be something that needs to be thought about. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, your name and address, please. Brian Walsh, 1529 Woodland Road. Um, one of the there's so many things that come up tonight, but why did that Sorry, can you hear me now? 
Okay. So one of the things they gave up tonight is that we have to pay the Robinson family because they're going to do this conservation easement because that has actual land set. I don't want to get them back up here, but uh, that, that reduces the value of the property. At $100,000 an acre, they're looking at roughly $10.4 million for that chunk of property. It's on sale right now. One of the lots is already under contract for $10, $12 million total. We're going to give them another $4.6 million through this conservation easement. So they're actually going to come up with another uh, almost 50% of what the ground is actually worth. Why the hell are we paying for this? Why aren't we just saying, get your $12 million, get your easement, and go on? A question you guys can't really answer. The other question is, these grant awards, everybody says, oh, they're going to come, don't worry about it. Two years ago, you were going to have $5 million in grants for Oakland. You got 1.5. You're going to get $7 million from DCNR for this. You got two. Now you're telling everybody tonight that if this referendum passes, that the tax will be there forever, even if you can't buy great building. So then we'll have 800000 a year going to fund other projects you may have, like Oakport or a little park here or a little park there. This is absurd. You're asking people to vote, to spend a ton of money for the next at least 30 years of their lives. And some of this won't make it 30 years, but we should have a little consideration for those that will. On a basis that you have no idea what you're going to do with this, what your annual operating cost is going to be. You know, we're supposed to just take this on a whim and vote and give you the right to tax us for a deal that may never happen. You should have had the grants in place first. And as far as the development of the property, everybody that is in this community lives on a property that was formal farmland. Are your communities that ugly? Do you hate your homes and your communities that much? that you can't conceive of somebody else having a house. It's two acres of zoning on this Cray Billy lot right now. If you guys can do your job, which I believe you can, then you all allow a mess to be built there. You'll have maybe 100, 150, 100, 150 homes there, keep space open, and it'll be a beautiful site, just like so many of our other neighborhoods are. So this is ridiculous to vote for this. Thank you, sir. We have questions or we have assertions. There was no question in there. Well, then, then, then we will allow everybody if they want to make statements. They can make statements. All right, so first off, I don't agree. There were about 15 questions in his, in his statement. All of which were rhetorical questions. They, weren't they were questions. He just didn't wait. Like, it's not a debate. He didn't wait for an answer. I don't care about that. The point is, is that we people here are respecting. They're asking questions. Brian came here to make a bunch of assertions. Let's move to this guy. Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. Myron Grubaugh, 1024 Dunvegan Road. Uh, this question is to Natural Lands. Um, you you said that you didn't get involved in projects that you didn't believe you get the grants for. What percentage of projects that you get involved in do you typically get grants for? Do you have that number? I, I, do you have a percentage? I, I don't have a percentage. I, I can tell you that um, you know, we were recently recognized by DCNR as, as the top uh, grant getter for land, land protection work. I think we've gotten over 50 million um, from the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources programs over the years. And so we are very confident. We're very confident that the county is going to come through. I personally, you know, I personally suspect that the county might be waiting to see what does the township want to do. Um, but we have a great relationship with Chester County. We've done great projects with the county, and so we fully expect the county is going to be supportive. And we've gotten every indication from, from the state that with these successive rounds that they're having, that there will be more grant money coming. Okay. Stay, stay up. i got another question. There were statements made in the last meeting about how uh, conservancies and preserved lands turn into crime locations. Um, you all have several of these preserved lands. Can you speak to any kind of increased crime at any of your preserved areas? 
Nothing significant. Um, I can't ever say that nothing ever happens. I mean, we know that if we know that if the group goes up and down the East Coast, you know, breaking into cars, you know, we may have some of that happening in our parking lots. But in terms of increased um, safety issues or crime, no, we don't. We also know from uh, the neighboring township that their uh, Okahaki Preserve, which is a 200-acre passive recreation park, in 18 years has had zero issues. One minute. Okay. Oops. Lost um, so you, we've got to figure six hundred eighty-one thousand dollars that's to be generated every year. Is that correct? Okay. Twenty-five percent of that is supposed to be seventy-five percent is to go to repay debt for debt retirement. Correct. Twenty-five percent of that is to be used for maintenance fees and everything else. 25% of that number is $170,250, not $136,000. Yeah, no, it's, well, the way it's calculated is it's 25% above the, um, so I know what you're saying. So like one third, like it's, it's, if it's, it's not 75, 25 as I read it, it's 25% it's, it's over and above what we're raising for debt service. Does that make sense? No. So it's <laughs> <laughs> so an to your $544,000 dollars level debt service payments is 6% over 30 years, okay? okay. So uh, an additional 25% of that is 136. An additional 25% of 544,000 is 136. Okay. That makes sense. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. One second. Sorry. Sorry, my phone was buzzing. Go ahead, yes, your name and address, please. All right. Uh, I'm Isabel Pizzi and I live on 811 West Street Road. Um, my question, I don't know if this was addressed before because I came a little too late, but um, if Craigler were to be developed, we know the extent of the impact it would have on the schooling system. Because as of right now, I'm aware that uh, Ruston High School is about just under like 70 people under capacity, uh, like max capacity. Are we like prepared to deal with are you prepared to deal with an influx of students? That's a question I gotta say is probably more for the school and the school board. Uh, when developed, what I will tell you is when Cray Billy had a development plan, the school district was aware. Those developments are taken into account for when they do their projections so that they can account for any increased students that they may have to absorb when those developments are done. Obviously, they're just estimates. But until there's an actual development plan filed or the district's aware of it, uh, they don't take it into consideration. The township does forward those plans, those development plans to the school district. They're required to do so under the Pennsylvania law so the district can account for it. Thank you. Sure. Yes, ma'am, your name and address? Uh, Megan Haney, 323 Ponsage.